Well, How are you a, guys feeling today, though? Hung over. Yeah. <laughs> really hung over. Rick? Check out the bags <laughs> under the eyes. <laughs> I feel about as bad as he looks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink for taste, just effect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually worse than this, a lot worse than this. <laughs> this is day number one. Yeah, it's going to get worse as it goes on. And everybody gets crankier and starts yelling at each other. <laughs> and Colin one. James a fucking cunt. And Dickhead Rolofsky here will be fucking <laughs> ready to fuck up. We're, we're just politer at the first of the week when we're late. Well, yesterday was, was, was very emotional for me. We really tore it up last night. Uh, probably stayed a little later than we should have. Uh, we went to Dooley's and had some beers, and uh, everybody really needed to unwind after the first day. Well, here we go, taking off from Kenville, heading off to Moncton, New Brunswick. First thing in the morning, everybody's nice and hungover. How did last night go? It was good. It was good. I mean, the crowd was on fire. Um, probably not as many numbers that we would like to have seen, but uh, as far as the crowd goes, it was good. For the last five or six years, I haven't been around the Maritons much. I've only done a handful of matches here, and I've kind of lost touch with, with the young wrestlers. Most of them I'm just meeting for the first time, or, you know, if I've met them before, to be honest, I don't remember. But uh, in terms of having a chance of making it in the business, I think Jeff Osborne uh, has got every opportunity if he plays his cards right. He, he kind of reminds me of a, of a young Bobby Roode, and that's about the biggest compliment I can give to a wrestler. His timing is impeccable. He just looks like, you know, sometimes you can tell a lot about a guy just before he locks up. He just looks like a wrestler. You know, just the way he moves around. We didn't do much last night with him, but everything he did was spot on. He wasn't nervous. He was up for everything. I think out of the young guys, he's heads and tails above the rest of them. The kids out here, they think having 10 matches and they had to set up, you know, 15 minutes, set up the ring, they think that's paying their dues. And you see those kids walking around with attitude. They're like, no, I, I don't have to do this. And it's like, yes, you have to do this. And they're sleeping while the rest of the guys, oh, look what Jeff's doing. No, but they missed the setting what up the ring. Doing? That's why they're loading chairs. They missed the setting You're up the ring. And they're sleeping. First he makes James Mason, the guy with 10 million matches and the most seniority, British heavyweight champion. You move his bag was, in the dressing room. I was napping when he moved that, Which is, which is that, a hey, I'm why are you talking when I'm talking? And uh, then he goes into the girls' bathroom and sleeps while these guys are putting out chairs. You gotta pay your dues in this business, one way or the other. I mean, James could tell you good stories about paying your dues. For me, I, I was just the, uh, the, the gopher. I just, just went for everything. And uh, that lasts about two, three years until, until another new guy comes in. And then it's your turn to start dishing it back to them, which is nice. We decided to do this show in a bar, which uh, we thought would, would we could do a little bit of an edgier show because of a, an older crowd. So the first day was a little rocky, but first day on tour is generally rocky. Any tour you go to, the first day is working out the bumps. My ma I was very disappointed with our match. I'm kind of a little calmed down now, but only because if we can go out there and if things went that bad and I somehow pulled us through it and we got through it, that means any other match we can get through here. It didn't go as smoothly as we wanted to, but it was a learning experience for the next six days, I guess. And for some reason, when she went down, I bent my finger backwards. Uh, I have a sprained finger, according to people who looked at it. Oh, she hurt her finger. You know, shit happens. You get bumped, it's wrestling, you're gonna get hurt. You can't stop and you can't use any excuse. The girls had a bad match and it's from lack of preparation. Crystal, Purity Saint, should have gone to Gary's wrestling school and worked out a match with her and, wor and worked out beforehand and had it down. She didn't. She dropped the ball. She was down uh, for this tour in Halifax and she had access to my ring 24-7 uh, for the whole time she was there. I mean, she was there, I think, a week before the tour. And uh, there was one day in particular that Krista and a couple other of my students uh, were at the school and she was supposed to show up because they were supposed to go over their matches and, you know, just do a little workout in the, in the ring. And she never even showed up. Krista, who's a perfectionist, didn't handle it professionally. She should have uh, she should have took her opponent aside afterwards and, and, and discussed it. And if she wants to yell at her in private, that's fine. But to yell about her behind her back is bad. It wasn't professional. That's, you know, everybody's going to have a bad match. Everybody's going to screw up. 
but that's kind of unprofessional, the, the way she reacted. I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have been standing in the hall, but it was the heat and it was the waiting and trying to get everything so everything comes out at the perfect time. But yes, I shouldn't have stood in the hall. That was my fault and it was very unprofessional and I won't do it again. Apparently Mike Hughes didn't like Krista when he first met her, but then suddenly he did like her. Uh, I don't know, maybe maybe she dafted him at first, maybe she didn't say hi when he said hi, maybe she didn't hear, but uh, you know, as most people with an ego, when somebody pays a bit of attention, all of a sudden they take a, a liking, now apparently they're best friends. Yeah, I, I, I really think the, the world of Krista right now, actually, after just one day, I, uh, I have a lot of respect for her because she does have a passion for the business that I didn't realize. And that's one thing that I've done that everybody does. I had a preconceived notion about her and uh, I was wrong. First time, by the way, I was wrong. <laughs> I only met Mike Hughes for the first time yesterday and I thought he was a really nice guy and we were going to do a radio show and he gave me a little advice about he knows I don't want to be the slutty girl because I really, I really don't want to be seen as the slutty girl. That's not what I'm here for. And so he said, it's okay to show a little bit of sexy to get them interested in your wrestling which I think was great advice and I really took it to heart and I said Mike I really appreciate your advice thanks a lot anytime you have anything I'd love to hear it not half hour later in the car coming back from Mazda Pete said something along the lines that the way Mike told the story is you had attitude me? yeah you were arguing with them saying I don't want to do you know you're but a liar you're a filthy liar no I'm not I am not. Today was the first time I've ever spoken to Mike in my life. <laughs> Welcome to the world of Mike Hughes. Lesson learned. When Pete said that, it made me mad. Only because I'm trying so hard to build this good reputation. I'm, I'm a good girl. I'm here to wrestle. I'm not here for the guys. There's a lot of girls that get into the business and think that the way to get ahead is by sleeping with everyone in sight or if they, they have to get drunk or do the drugs or whatever. I don't date wrestlers. I don't do wrestlers. I don't do anyone in the business. Just cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> Krista, she's got probably more passion in this business than a lot of people. Uh, especially a lot of the students that I've trained. I mean, a lot of them have passion, but not like Chris. I think with her talent and her drive and her want to in wrestling, I really don't think she's going to need to show a lot of tits and ass, so to speak. I think I'm a pretty good-looking girl, and I'm trained, and I can do the moves, and I can do everything. I don't want to be confused with a hot girl who's just here to sleep with the wrestlers. Whether you like it or whether you don't, sex sells. And I understand her point of view that she wants to be recognized and respected as a wrestler, that uh, she just doesn't want to be out there as a TNA show. But like I told her, go out, show them just a little bit of what they want to see. You know, shake your ass if you got to bend over, show a little bit of cleavage. You'll grab their attention then, and then show them that you can wrestle. Jeff Osborne, I mean, he, uh, he was by far my best student. He was one of the very first students that I've trained, actually. and uh, he was just a natural. I started out, I was trained by uh, Gary Williams, he's the champ. Uh, he has a school, I actually went down to the States to train, and it didn't work out, and so I came back up and stumbled upon his school, it was really, I really locked out in that sense. And uh, I ended up being trained by him, and uh, he got me my first match, and the ball started rolling, and I got booked with Grand Prix, I, did, I toured in the summer. And uh, I've been in about a year and I have about 80 matches, so that's that's pretty good for like just like one year. And uh, I do MMA as well, right? Mixed martial arts. Yeah, mixed martial arts. Sorry. Um, so I got a, I got a big passion for that too. So we really wanted to give Tommy a push on this tour. Uh, just after seeing him the first day, uh, realized you know he's just got so much talent. We're gonna give him a bit of a push. Personally, I think. It's a waste of breath to talk about Jeff. I think he's a great guy. I think he's a fantastic wrestler. But it's a waste of breath because he's quitting. He's not going to be here anymore. He's leaving the business. Um, I wanted to bring it up for a long time. I, I told Gary last month. Um, I'm going to be uh, putting wrestling on the back burner for a while. I'm going to be getting out for a little while. Uh, I'm going to do MMA. I don't want to disappoint you. And you guys... Uh, but I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's probably a good idea to push me if I'm getting out. 
Yeah, that's cool, man. You want to go yeah, that way? Right. Right? I support you 100%. Yeah, no, I appreciate the honesty. What, what you've shown me and what the rest of them showed me last night is uh, is you're in a higher level than most of them. So I'm going to have to put you in a more prominent position in your matches at the very least so that you can help carry the show because these guys are the shits. This is really tough because uh, because I'm getting out of the business and uh, and like this is this is sort of a big thing and these guys you don't want to fucking burn bridges man because they'll kill you. I thought Pete was gonna like like attack me right. I didn't know how Pete would react. I, I feel bad. I feel like I disappointed Gary because like I'm not, I'm not gloating at all, but I, I'm I'm his best student right from the come out of the school and uh, he put he he. he backed me up a lot and he gave me a lot of he gave me a push and he he speaks like volumes about me and it's like it's like the weight of the world's off my shoulders man i like what he did where he came to us and he told us that uh that he was choosing mixed martial arts over professional wrestling and you know when somebody when somebody has a dream who am i to say no that's a good a good or a bad idea he was pretty nervous oh fuck him. he was tripping all over his words yeah he's very nervous but i didn't even realize he was a mixed martial artist <laughs> I had no idea. You know, maybe he could kick all of our asses. You know, I noticed right from day one, he's different than all the other guys. And uh, he really has a level of respect for the business. So, you know, he's, he's a stand-up guy. Uh, I've always had a rule in my school that uh, any of my students not to hook up girl guy. Uh, it's, just, it's just one of these things. If something happens between them and it doesn't work out, uh, you get into a predicament, you get in the middle of things, and it's just not good for anybody. Uh, Jeff and Krista, that exact thing happened. I made an exception for those two um, when I heard that, you know, they were interested in each other and I figured, uh, you know, they're both level-headed. We broke up, that's fine. I, I tried to talk to him multiple times. He doesn't want to talk. He just wants to ignore me or whatever. That's fine. It's just totally unnecessary. We were friends before. I, okay, our relationship didn't work out, but we can still be, you know, we still have a professional relationship. You know, we train together, we went to the same school, we work out at the same school, we do everything together. We can do things in a professional way. We're stoked. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Good we come all the way from PEI, we drove all the way here to support our maritime wrestlers, the home of the hottest wrestling all of North America and the world. Uh, Wild Man Williams for Prime Minister. Right. We gotta support our own maritime diva, Krista. She's uh, the hottest female wrestler in North America, possibly in the world, we believe so. Williams, I haven't seen wrestle in, in probably a year or so. Just had to come and see Lincoln Steen and Crystal Lynn Scott and other people I followed through YouTube and just wrestling websites. Uh, we get we get to go out there and set the crowd, you know what I mean? Which is kind of like nerve-wracking in a sense, but uh, at the same time, yeah, it's fun. This is going to be a tough crowd to work for. So we have to work real hard to get a reaction from them. It ain't going to be easy. This is the first time that we've been faced with the smart marks, what they call the smart marks. Uh, these are guys that uh, um, know everything about wrestling, fans that know everything about wrestling. Uh, really, it's very difficult to try to please them. They don't want to admit that they're wrestling fans to the other people that are beside them. But what they don't realize is they've all bought tickets, so they, they already admitted that they're wrestling fans. <laughs> It's not really bad for a first match because you want you want to you know because the crowd was dead and you guys did get them so so I, I can't, it, it was good but it, 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 just a little slower I did, in spots. I did feel that, man. But man, I'll tell you, it was, it was, the stuff was good. The work was Thank good. You so much. The crowd sounded a little dead when we came out, and uh, I don't know, it was packed and it was fucking awesome. That went great. I fucking love working with this guy, man. The fuck he lays everything in. It's nice and stiff. The fucking crowd. He's, he's from here and he got the crowd to, to, to hate him, which is tough. Hell of a match like for, for two lads to sort of move about and the big fella Titus to do those sort of moves at that sort of size is it's fantastic. The strategy is get in entertaining, get the hell out. That's my Agreed. strategy. Agreed. This crowd is uh... Hate the hecklers. Hate the hecklers. Really? Hate them. Well, well my heckler, face, right? No heel, it's good for no a heel. Face. She can say fuck they right off to them, right? I got a fucking... 
Yeah, I'm awesome. Oh. Why they're like, you suck. You suck. Oh, no, I'm awesome. Don't you know? She yeah. sucks. I have no Thank you. We were a lot calmer. I mean, I didn't end up hurting my finger and kind of getting dazed. Um, we didn't have any miscommunication with the ref. Exactly. We took our time. <laughs> Everything went smooth. One progression to the next. Got back? to the yeah, finish. That was a hundred times better than last night. Oh yeah, definitely. Good match. This is Joey Arsenal. Jo uh, when we ran a wrestling school, what, a year ago? Uh, <laughs> Joey came out and obviously he couldn't get in the ring and learn how to <laughs> wrestle, but he wanted to learn how it's done. So tonight he's debuting for us in a manager's role where he's going to go to the ring with Scott Savage uh, as an advisor. He's going to dress up in a little suit and look like a devious little prick. And uh, Scott's going to roll out of the ring at, at, at a point in the match where it looks like he can't win. He's going to lean over for advice from Joey. Joey's going to pretend that he's giving him advice. And then uh, Scott's going to go in and do something devious to take over the match and start beating the hell out of the guy until, until, uh, until he ends up losing in the end. Yes, it's the best feeling in the world. Not many guys make their debuts at national TV taping. Awesome, Joey. Yeah. Thanks for the interview, buddy. Yeah. You're a good man. Yeah. Once we get in there, I don't care if I've been in the business one week, 20 years, 50 years, we're the same, mate. I, I think I'm on my body tonight. I'm going to fight harder than what I fight you, you because know, he's just bigger, you know. Mm. So, but there's no such thing as that. When you get in the ring, you, you do your stuff and I do uh, my stuff. I feel like I just, my mind just opened up. It's like a, yeah. just a way, that, just like you were so, I just have to pull, you go, it's like you read my mind. I found with a lot of the green guys is that they, uh, they're scared to come back at us. Any lad that's been in a bit longer. Then sort of like the, the lads they've trained with, they, they seem to be backing off too much, which is really, it should be the opposite. But when I started, I was lucky to work with some real, real good people within my first like six months. And they taught me, you've got to come back harder and stronger. I wasn't really sure when to attack or not. And, but James was amazing. Felt like I was, like, I don't know, it just felt like I was wrestling somebody who really just took care of me. And it was great. Wrestling fans that show up and they want to cheer and they want to boo, they bring their signs. These are the guys that make wrestling. You know, these are the guys that that, that make it a pleasure for you to get in the ring and perform for. These are the guys that, that you know, they give their heart and soul outside. They're yelling and they're, and they're screaming and they're waving their signs and they're, they're jumping up and down the season. That's the reaction that you want when you get in the ring and perform. There was a lot of foul mouth kids from Moncton around here and they, they didn't keep their opinions to themselves. I know. Come on! Combined weight of a thousand pounds here. What are you guys? Three hundred pounds of me. Look at that. Machine, baby. They're taking shit bigger than you, kid. What's this? Come on. What's this? What? Those, those where are you? We're talking about six-year-old the front row. Great show. I thought um, definitely. There's a lot of great talent here. I was really impressed with the show. Like I, I we drove an hour and a half. Or we drove an hour and a half to come see the show. I wasn't let down. But definitely an independent show with a lot of promise, and that's what we got. I was glad to see Steen in there. Uh, I saw him probably a year ago too, and 
vast improvements in his in the in ring and he's a, he's got great personality. To we are the Steen Dream Team. I'm talking. We wanted more Lincoln Steen. We were here for Lincoln Steen. We just want we just wanted the entire show Lincoln Steen. Lincoln Steen's a champ. I, I hope to own his clock one day. Eight dollars. Eight dollars. Eight dollars for Lincoln Steen. Lincoln Steen is a champ. Steen. Steen. There, there was a girl up top, and she was she was psycho. True. She was psycho. Yeah. Well, I'll agree with you on two points. Julian Young and Titus. Oh, Lincoln Julian Steen is a champ. Ew, Julian Young. Julian Young. Look, Julian Young is good. He usually is good. But tonight, Sidewinder tonight, is no. good. No. Oh, oh. No. Yes, Sidewinder is good. It's Titus Osborne. Julian that British no, was Osborne name. The British guy. No, he's good what was the British guy's name? Oh, it's Osborne. Mason. I forgot about Osborne. He's making it too. Yeah. I can't believe I forgot that. Um, oh, Trash Canyon. Fucking suck too. <laughs> the only so one tired. that can make it anywhere in wrestling is Titus. Titus? I'll, I'll agree, Don't Titus. Me. See, this is what we were talking about. This guy's going to make it. Yes, this is one of the ones that's going to make it. This is good. He's got uh, he's got a lot of upsides. The finish was great. I mean, he's always hit the fucking Spanish fly. Don't air this on NBC, but he's a nappy-headed hoe. <laughs> but yeah, kid has talent. Maritime Cup champion. Good deal. Going to lose he's, the dreads. Lose, well, not lose the dreads. I think he's going to lose the dreads. Just jack up, hit a diet, make her happen. So why are you guys, why are you guys coming along so much? Because Pete's paying the bill. <laughs> it's all Pete's Woo! time. <laughs> he's yeah. not seeing this, is he? Good guy. Uh, he's cunts used to come and watch us wrestle. That was back in 2000, 2001. It was a while ago. They, 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 <laughs> 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 which is not too long ago. You, you wouldn't believe it. You'd see them in a town in Nova Scotia, and then two nights later, they'd be in New Brunswick. They, they were everywhere. They'd travel up and down the roads. They'd go, well, basically... They were what they were. They were nerds who couldn't get laid, so <laughs> they drove around and watched wrestling every night. Do you know how long we ever cut the music stupid? Cut the music stupid! Yeah! <laughs> five years! Well, five years Five today. years! Five years. In, in all seriousness. Yeah, could. Classic. Anyway, the, these, uh, these fans, I mean, what are you guys now? Late Horse. 20s? 30, late 20s now? 28, yeah. 28. Late 20s. And the, new fan, the new fans, the guys that are 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, are absolute fucking nerds. <laughs> I mean, they, these guys just sit down and plunk away at the computer. Oh, he sucks, he sucks. He missed that spot. He, he this, he that. He worked the right instead of the left, thinking that they know what they're talking about, but they know fuck all. And, or they, and then they always cheer for the bad guy and hate the good guy. They're usually pretty similar in that they're between 20 and 25 years old. They've never had sex. Uh, they have very good educations but very poor paying jobs. They live with their mom and, uh, and they wear wrestling t-shirts. Oh, dude, we're going to have some fun. Tonight was a good show. We might go out to some other shows there. Maybe Sussex. Sussex. Yeah, Soon night. on the Friday night at the Legion. <laughs> and then we're going to Halifax on the Sunday. Yeah, we're going to be there. We're going to be square. <laughs> the man has a body of steel. He has a heart of gold. <laughs> it's Mr. Russia, for God's sake. Mr. Russia. <laughs> Mr. Russia. <laughs> Mr. Russia. <laughs> You're supposed to be a heart of gold.